welcome to the first class on the course environmental change um, I've seen most of you obviously last uh, just a few days ago and some people I've seen this morning but uh, if I haven't uh, spoken to you before uh, welcome the this course is called environmental change you see that here environmental change uh, I'm your uh, teacher Nathan Bowden your lecturer and today's lesson is on climate change and the greenhouse effect before we start uh, more in detail, I'll just give you a short, uh, what is environmental change? It's very broad. It's environmental change is defined as a change or disturbance of the environment caused by human influences or natural ecological processes. And this is a huge scale. So uh, a, a change or disturbance of the environment, it could be a small scale of, uh, of a park or a city, but it also can be a global scale. We'll be talking about both of those in this course. And also this change can be, uh, can be between the climate change and also biophysical environmental change. So there are a lot of processes. Some of them are fast, some of them are slow. We'll be going over through um, most of them. The course uh, has basically two parts. You have uh, the lessons, like which you are, that you're uh, watching and participating in now. And you have the assignments, so you have um, you should have some room uh, to do your computer work, uh, but also at home on your own laptop or your desktop computer uh, will all, will be fine. There are four lessons with each lesson having an assignment, and of course the class will be on Big Blue Button, which you're looking at now probably, or on YouTube if you uh, come in later. There are this is the for 2015. We have uh, today, we have two courses, uh, and then uh, Monday we have uh, the third course. The assignment for one and two are due next Friday, so I always give you one week uh, to do all of the assignments. And because we have two weeks of field work, assignment, uh, um, so the, the fourth lesson is on Friday week two, but the assignments three and four aren't due until the 28th and the 2nd. So you have you have actually three weeks. Uh, yeah, so it's in, yeah, it's in October. Because we have two weeks, remember in the project we have a week of field work and we also have Finland week. So I, I don't count them as uh, the time needed to do the homework. You understand? So you have, for the first two, you have one week to do it. But for lesson three and lesson four, you actually have uh, three weeks because two weeks are kind of dead weeks, you can call them, weeks that we don't uh, have um, school. Yeah, so these are the deadlines and um, everything needs to be, all the assignments need to be uploaded uh, to Blackboard and there is a deadline. So it's always at midnight. I'll show you that now. So there are four assignments. Each assignment is worth 25% of your final grade. All of the individual, you must do the assignments by yourself. Um, I, it's fine if you work together, but um, just so you know, I can tell if you are uh, copying each other. Uh, we have a software program on Blackboard that tells me uh, if, you're, if you're copying. So please do not copy. I will see that. Um, if you work together, of course, but use your own words on the assignments. So they're done individually and turned into Blackboard. And there's a link uh, under the, I think, under the handy links. And like I said, each one is worth 25% of your final grade due on these dates and before midnight. I think Blackboard it literally gives you until one second before midnight to turn them in. Are there any questions about this? Oh, midnight uh, Breda, I should say. <laughs> so not midnight um, uh, New Zealand. <laughs> well, actually, gives New Zealand gives New Zealand more time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, if uh, if there are no questions about this, I think it's pretty straightforward. Everything's on Blackboard. The presentations are on Blackboard. The video is on Blackboard. Everything. So what is climate change? We'll start off with climate change. I'm sure you've heard of, of this and some of you have had courses on climate change, so this might be slightly review for some of you. Climate, climate uh, is defined as the average weather at a given period of time in the year. 
and then averaged over a longer period, so 30. So what, uh, what is the summer like in the Netherlands averaged over 30 years? So climate is a much um, broader definition than weather because weather, this is the second point, weather changes a lot. Uh, it changes from day to day, but climate should remain relatively constant. Although, again, this is not true. We'll be talking about natural change to climate in today's lecture. But it should remain relatively constant in a 30-year period. Um, if it doesn't remain constant for any reason, if it's anthropogenic, meaning by humans, or if it's, um, if it's natural, it's still called climate change. So the difference between anthropogenic climate change and natural climate change. So the key question is, what is significant change? Um, if weather changes day to day, uh, and the same day each year, maybe sunny one year today and today, what is today? The, the 4th of September? And it may be rainy the 4th of September next year. So significant uh, is something that depends on the, the level of the climate variability. And crucial understanding difference between climate change and climate variability. So here we have uh, climate change and climate variability, yeah? So on the top, let's say the average, this is again, this is the 4th of September today. So the average 4th of September has an average high of this and average low, you know? Sometimes it's a little bit cooler, sometimes it's a little bit warmer. And climate, uh, uh, if we have a new climate, it will, it will, sh it could shift uh, that the average is a couple of degrees warmer or possibly a couple of degrees cooler on average, yeah? We also have an increase in variance, meaning uh, the cool days get cooler and the, uh, and the warm days get warmer. Um, thank you, Sadi, for that uh, email announcement. And then we have both, yeah? So we have where the, the average climate gets warmer and it uh, broadens out. And um, I'll tell you that some, uh, uh, most people think we are in this last case. Some sources of information, if you are interested, um, I mean, everything I'm using in these sheets comes from the IPCC, and there's their website. So the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change. And uh, there's lots of reports on there. And also the uh, fourth assessment report, which is published in 2007. So all, uh, I, I I did not make all of these graphs and charts. Uh, there are much people who much know much more than me who've, who've made these. You can go visit them. So the global mean temperatures are rising. Uh, and uh, hopefully, if you're not already convinced in today's lecture, I'll try to convince you that this is uh, m going faster than it's ever done in the uh, history of our planet. And the last, the warmest 12 years ever have been uh, in the last uh, 20 years, approximately, even less than that, 17 years. So the 12, in the last 15 years, the 12 warmest years ever have been recorded. And here is a uh, trend. Uh, this is, uh, um, anybody know why we go back to about 1860? Anybody, you can raise your hand if you want. Well, cars were a little bit later. Yeah, so um, you can just feel up. I'll type that. So that's um, that's what uh, Anthony said. He's he's correct. So quite often around the 1840s, we will start showing. Uh, now suddenly hands go up because they know the answer. <laughs> um, so around the 1840s, the Industrial Revolution took over, and people started. Uh, aggregating in cities, and the growth in cities has been rapid and increasing, yes? Uh, we already have data like that, but how far was it? Ah, there you go. That's a very good question. So how did we get these get these data? Uh, we'll be going into that. Today. Very good question, uh, Luke, and we'll be going into that. So, and that's actually this, this sheet that you're looking at now. So the global surface temperature between 1855 to 2010, it's basically the same what you just saw. Uh, how is this curve calculated? How can we go back to 1855? Did they have monitoring stations then? And 
we go even further back, we go much further back to 1855, we go back, uh, we can look uh, hundreds of thousands of years in the past. How do we do that? Um, and here we go. First, partly it's because it's averaged. Uh, so for this part, we have had weather stations and the rest I'll be getting in the next, yes? Uh huh. Exactly. So, uh, s but we only uh, took. Uh, so, how is the global? Because you're right. Uh, people have been measuring the 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 temperature on our planet in like Paris and in London and then and New York, etc. They've been monitoring the weather in local areas. What about the global? So, how do we know that the temperature has been rising in in Africa? Or uh, you know, in places where they haven't been monitoring. <laughs> so that's a good question. We'll be getting to that. Okay. So possible problems with station data. A lot of the data that we have now, we have stations now. We have stations, uh, weather stations everywhere around the world, even on the top of mountains in, in Patagonia, which is in South America. But there's some problems. First, instrument or human errors. Uh, change of instruments, observer uh, techniques. So we're constantly refining our techniques of, of taking the temperature. And maybe back then it wasn't very reliable. Or maybe it was more reliable. Uh, changes in station surroundings. So if you took the temperature in New York um, 100 years ago, of course it would be cooler because it was less concrete maybe. It absorbs the temperature. Uh, so uh, these are very critical questions um, that the local changes uh, affect the station. Solutions are comparing stations and, uh, and, and conglomerating all pictures into uh, all uh, station data into global picture. So now we have satellites and we have stations across the world, but we, uh, more importantly is we have very, very good computers that can run models and simulations. So that's how we do it now. But we have other evidence too. Uh, just last year I was in Chamonix in the summer and um, th at the top of the mountain they have um, they have a glacier. And this, ha have any of you ever, I see nodding, have you ever been there? Yeah. And it's, it's disappearing. Uh, they, they have very clear photographs. You, s you see two of the photographs right here. Yeah, exactly. Ice and glaciers. We'll get to that, Philip. Thank you. Uh, but this is uh, the glacier on, on top of... Uh, this is a different glacier. This is... I'm not even sure this is. But uh, in Austria, uh, they see similar. And not just Austria, it's it's everywhere. So we're seeing this. This is in Alaska. Um, the glaciers around the world have been melting. No. So that's what we're getting to. Exactly. So that's where we're really getting to. So not only are there's no, there not only are the glaciers melting, which gives of course a good indication that it's getting warmer, but uh, there's nowhere where they're growing. So on average, uh, they're melting much m and quite fast. And let's not even talk about Greenland. Uh, which is melting absurdly in Iceland. So here are, are some recordings uh, for glaciers and frozen ground. So we and not and uh, Europe, believe it or not, has been pretty stable uh, for the last 40 years. Even though we've we've remarked this in uh, in the Alps, compared to uh, uh, Northwest United States and uh, Alaska, etc., which is even further more north. The, the melting of not only the glaciers, but also frozen ground. It's also called tundra. Uh, that has uh, been even more drastic. Any questions on that before I move on? I think we've all been confronted with this before. So it's always a nice reminder. And also, of course, data for when you're in your assignments, I ask, I think, a question about glaciers melting. And now this can help you uh, answer that question. Snow cover, uh, so we've talked about a glacier and ice, but snow cover is also receding. So the amount of snow that's falling 
an amount of uh, land that's covered in snow has dropped uh, by you know by quite a bit, uh, about uh, that's three million square kilometers on average, about in the last uh, 80 years. This is important for the albedo effect. We'll be talking about that soon. After the break, actually, we'll get to the albedo effect. Um, and the, the sea ice. Uh, not affecting everything the same, though. Uh, so some places, and the ice ju is just like the glaciers. In some places, the glaciers are receding. Uh, I mean, the ice is receding faster than, than in other places. Uh, climate change of the oceans. So we've talked about land, we've talked about mountains, now we'll talk about the oceans. This is change in temperature by depth, yeah? And this is the equator, and this is the south, and this is the north. This is the transect through the Atlantic Ocean, from the far north to the far south. The, uh, and this is change. This is no change, and this is uh, a large change. As you've seen, that's, that's quite a lot. The oceans have, have uh, heated up, especially on the surface. Well, that's kind of obvious, uh, by quite a lot. And, but even uh, the, at extreme depths, uh, they, are, um, they are changing. So up to three kilometers. Imagine how much water this is. And water is extremely good at holding temperature. Um, and when it warms up, it also will uh, put... Uh, Oxygen, water in the air just by evaporation. So that's also warming up. The ocean content has been over. I've now done a transect through the ocean. Here's the averages for all the oceans since 1955. We've been monitoring these since 1955. That's why you see the beginning of the data. And it has been uh, warming up steadily in the last, um, the last 50 years, 50, 60 years. There are variations. We're not. I don't think we're. we're we, we might go into it in a, some, some other classes. Have you guys heard of like the Pineapple Express or El Nino? Um, there are um, cyclical patterns. Uh, El El Nino, uh, where the oceans uh, will warm up temporarily or they'll cool down temporarily. That's La Nina, El Nino and La Nina. So. That's where the cyclical effect, we will be talking about that, but not right now. That's why you see sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up, but it's a gradual uh, up, and it's about an eight-year cycle. That's why you see about eight years difference between uh, the maximums and the minimums. It's another reason why we say climate is a, an average of 30 years. Uh, sea level has, has also risen, risen. The oldest data comes from... Um, from uh, Amsterdam, Brest, and I'm sorry, I won't even try to pronounce that <laughs> word, um, where they've been, I, I think it's in Poland, uh, where they've been monitoring the, um, the sea uh, for a very long time, for obvious reasons. These are very powerful uh, uh, um, uh, sailing countries, um, and they've been measuring. And we've seen a, a stark increase of almost two meter increase since the 1700s, especially in the last 100 years. Recently, of course, um, let me go back. So how do they do this? Anybody have an idea how they uh, they measured this? Any ideas? That's right. They just put a pole in the water and they, uh, <laughs> and they monitored it as well as they could back in the 18th century. Um, no, no, well... well Yes. So as you see, uh, they, they, they're, these are three different places. So you could have uh, small variations uh, in, in uh, sea levels between different uh, countries, but it's pretty obvious if you w look at them next to each other that um, it, it's, been s it's been growing steadily in the last 300 years. Nowadays, we use slightly more... Uh, uh, you've already seen the picture, I'll show it. We use satellites, right? So we use satellites that uh, are in, uh, in orbit around our planet, and they uh, monitor it. So they've been monitoring it since about the, the early 90s, and they've seen a four centimeter rise in in the last 10 years. So, and these were we'll produced in 2006. That's a lot, it's a big rise. 
and again you see you see variations uh, like I said it's a El, El Nino uh, La Nina is an eight-year cycle so that's why the difference is about four um, here we go more more evidence title title changes so not only has it gone the average has gone higher but the title uh, differences are also greater and that's why not only is it shifting you know to higher but also it's br uh, broadening out making um, this for us where would this be a, a problem the raising of the of the of the of the tides and that the tides are getting higher and lower anybody huh well the Dutch coast is a very good example anybody else we'll definitely lose land for sure the Netherlands yes but what about other places like Southeast Asia there are a lot of extremely um, and in fact uh, what about there are some French islands uh, uh -huh. lots of islands in Pacific and Indian Ocean that are very huh? Haiti but also in the Pacific Islands so so Togo mm -hmm, the South Sea Islands are projected to completely disappear in about 10 to 50, 10 to 20 years uh, why because uh, now they are affected two things they're made by volcanoes these are called they're called atolls so they are only like 50 centimeters above sea level yeah we uh, biologists are also busy um, because they can observe the uh, trends in the flowering of plants and here I believe this is in the UK yeah it's, it's in the UK there is a, uh, a plant called the chestnut tree the horse chestnut and it blooms and they've recorded the date of you know the date that it bloomed and they see that the trend is going m much down that it blooms earlier and earlier okay so I've given you like five or six things that are even more I think I've like eight evident types of evidence about why uh, what has been changing and why some things have not been changing too much here are some things that have not been changing uh, tornadoes doesn't affect Europe too much uh, but where I'm from, we have to lots of tornadoes. They haven't been more or less in the last few years. Dust storms actually uh, are in the United States has been getting have gotten better. Why? Because of management or just uh, managing the soil better. Hail, lightning, these are unaffected by climate change. And the Antarctic sea ice. Uh, the Arctic sea ice has been melting, but the Antarctic sea ice has, has stayed relatively stable. No, these are aspects of climate that have not been observed to change. So th these tornadoes are not getting heavier. Uh, we don't we don't see more of them. No. This is tornadoes. I'm not talking about hurricanes, but uh, hurricanes uh, there are more evidence of that. But tornadoes, no. All right. I said, well, we we've only been observing observing for 50, 60 years. Uh, what about before that? Um, again, we go back to the biologists. There are some trees. Uh, here is uh, the bristle cone pine, which can, um, believe it or not, live up to be 10,000 years old. Uh, these are very, very dense trees that live in um, very arid, dry environments, harsh environments on the tops of mountains. And in fact, I, I have spoken to a biologist who accidentally <laughs> killed a, a 5,000 year old tree because he was he had to bore it for this evidence and when he he didn't know what was this um, it was this old until he had already chopped it down and he um, he was very sad because he's of course he loves trees but what we do is we go back here's a here's this tree this here's this bristlecone pine tree which grows very very slowly and can become very very old we uh, if we cut it down we can look at it, the rings and in warm years and in wet years where the climate is good for the tree it will grow faster so you have to look under a microscope this is 
it looks like to the naked eye without a microscope, and this is under a microscope. So if it's thicker, like this year, it was wetter, and if it was thinner, it was cooler. And so they go back through time, and they correlate the data from the last 50 years to up to 10,000 years in the past. So that's one way of looking at uh, climate through the trees, tree rings. And of course, this only works for, for tree rings. And uh, so for the Northern Hemisphere, they've tried to construct this. You've seen very much change through for the last uh, 2,000 years. But in the last 50, it's, it's, it's gone much higher. Ice cores. So now we go to a, a larger scale, scale, and a friend of mine did this. This was his PhD. He uh, he went to the um, he went to the Arctic and he drilled for ice cores. And in these ice cores, here you see a guy. First, the drill comes out like this, and then they cut it uh, to make it look like like a, a, a piece of lumber. And then they uh, cut it into smaller pieces. And in this ice, there are uh, as trapped air, yeah, they can analyze the uh, the air trapped in the bubble, the oxygen trapped in the bubble, for different isotopes. And isotopes degrade at a at different uh, rates. Um, and isotopes, so different molecules of, of oxygen are different. They, we call them isotopes of each other. But they're all oxygen, but they're different isotopes, and they degrade. And looking at the degradation, we can tell what the temperature was. Um, hundreds of thousands of years years ago, yeah. Depending on how far you drill, <laughs> quite far. They have millions of years. Uh, they go. They can go as far back as millions of years. Um, the the problem is um, that the isotopes degrade, and at a certain time, they've all degraded to the lowest isotope form. So there is there are some technical um, technical ends. Oh, uh, also, which is odd, uh, biologists have been using uh, using uh, atomic radiation. That's that's another thing I heard. I just heard about that on the radio uh, a, f a few weeks ago. Uh, side note: um, we as humans, uh, 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 I think France, the United States, Russia, we were the most active in the UK on bombing using atomic weapons and testing them in the middle of the ocean normally, but the radiation spread throughout the world. And this radiation has been slowly de degrading. People have used this radiation to date things. To date, to see how old something is. So if they, yeah. So they also for like the cells of, a, of the human body. So how old is uh, is your body? You'd be surprised. Uh, not at, not all parts of your body are the same age. <laughs> Okay, so they've uh, recorded this now uh, to about 400,000 years for CO2 uh, and then uh, temperature change from present through these ice cores. These are called the Vostok um, uh, ice cores. Uh, and here we go. Here's uh, They've compared this to other places like the measurements in uh, Mauna Loa is in Maui. An island in the Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian island chains, uh, which is the most beautiful place I've ever been to. I recommend it. And they have shown that they uh, uh, correlate very, very strictly with the CO2 from Vladivostok. So these are confirmed. The CO2 from Mauna Loa, top of the volcano, and it's, a, uh, it's an extinct volcano. And... Uh, and the Vlostok concentrations. That is in, um, it's in the, I believe it's the Russian part of the Arctic, but it's in the Arctic Circle. That's where they do the ice cores. Okay, now we're talking about, we've talked about climate change general. We're going to take a break very, sh I think, pretty soon, um, but it's not just CO2, it's also carb uh, sorry, carbon dioxide here we see in the upper left-hand corner. We also see st strong increases in nitrous oxide. We talked about that. Nitrous oxide is, is produced by what again? 
See who's paying attention. Eh? Where was where's Nightwing coming from? Any remember? Huh? By cars, by agriculture. Yeah, that's why it's uh thank you, Tompkin. So it's raising uh it's raising here. This is uh, cars. What about methane? Cows, yeah, so cows burp a lot. People think it comes from the other end of the cow, but uh, <laughs> they've done lots of measurements and the worst producer is the cow's mouth, the stomach of the cow. Also termites, believe it or not, are the number one producer of methane in the world. But uh, we have little impact on them. Cows, we have a lot of impact. That's why it's increasing here, but not just cows, uh, uh, cattle in general, yeah. Uh, any ungulate. So, and then we have aerosols, sulfate aerosols. And those come from lots of different things. Also cars, uh, industry. Okay, so here we have a change in greenhouse that we've been measured and coming from ice cores. So I, I, you've already seen carbon dioxide, the ice cores, concentration, and then in the last 50 years for um, this is nitrous oxide. There was uh, this is a ex volcanic explosion, by the way. If people were interested, uh, there are some, some uh, volcanic explosions. Um, uh, uh, Krakatoa, I believe this one was, and then uh, the last 50 years. Uh, methane has been relatively stable, and then again, the last 50 years. I think we see a pattern emerging. <laughs> so now, I mean, the evidence is pretty overwhelming. It, uh, I don't think anybody can disagree that um, there have been much elevated levels of CO2, of nitrous oxide and ammonia, of methane, and of aerosols. Uh, that, I think, is completely... Uh, okay, well, th thank you, Philip, for that... Uh, if, uh, we're taking a break. Uh, if you're interested, uh, check that out. What Philip, the link that Philip just sent. Okay. So last sheet before our 15-minute break. Summary: uh, Global surface temperatures have risen about 0 0.6 degrees Celsius since 1900. That's a lot, by the way. And it's uh, that's that was in 2005. I'm sure it's risen even more by now. It's likely that this warming is larger than for any century since 2000 AD, uh, and that was um, from. Excuse me, I'll turn off. Uh, turn off my email. And that's uh, when there were lots of volcanic eruptions. The warmest differences in different parts of the world, but the last 25 years, uh, everything has warmed, and very few places have cooled. So sometimes in the past, some places got warmer and other places got cooler, but the global average was the same. But now everywhere is getting warmer. Uh, other changes, the sea level has been rising. The ocean heat content has increased, which then means more water is evaporating. And uh, water is also a greenhouse gas, water vapor. Almost all mountain glaciers have retreated in some parts of the world worse than other parts of the world. And this is coincided uh, with this global warming. So levels of CO2 have dramatically increased. And uh, now the question is, are temperatures and the atmosphere compositions linked? And we'll be getting to that. I'm going to save. I'm going to save that uh, for the next half of the class. We'll take a 15-minute break. Uh, let me pause some stuff. <laughs> 